specific party politics, but just the overarching sort of sense of where the Palestinian people of Gaza are going, what they can. I'm listening for. to this guy. The message from the Hamas, host, the BBC Islamic host. resistance movement, which governs Gaza, is all about that word: resistance, struggle, confrontation. He's a scoundrel. Israel. Do you think that concept, that ideology? Is of any use to the people of Gaza anymore? Well, I'll tell you what the people of, uh, in, in Gaza feel generally. You know, for example, any father of three or four or five children, he already knows that his young children are not going to anywhere with their education. You know, more than seventy percent of young people, seventy percent, I'm saying seven zero, seventy percent, are unemployed. You know, the poverty figures in, in Gaza, 54% of the people are on the poverty line, which is more than 1 million people. Uh, deep poverty, more than 33%, which are 700,000 people. So when you speak about uh, those figures, uh, what can the people do in order to change things, you know? But and, the, the danger, if I may say so, Doctor, is yeah. that the result of that sort of despair is a sort of nihilism amongst the people and I'm thinking now of Hamas and its its efforts to encourage people every week to go down to that accusing the victim offense with Israel is to get as close as they can open Some concentration the camp encouraged to throw rocks to resist as they put it and the inevitable consequence not really the Israelis open, have said open. that they will not allow what they regard as terrorist activity on their border the inevitable consequence is that snipers open fire and over the last what a year and a half hundreds of mostly young palestinians have been killed for you as a psychiatrist do you wish that the leaders of Hamas would stop encouraging young people to do that sort of thing <laughs> well i'll tell you as if it is a normal first, situation there more than three thousand children got wanted during those year and a half actually it's not only a few hundred small i think three thousand three hundred children who got talented second a lot of the people they were just going to demonstrate that they're not happy with the conditions you know that we are living under crazy conditions and no one is really doing anything about it knowing that no one at all you know they are tortured there it is hell it turned more, by a military fascist apartheid occupation really use those uh, words it is a terrorist state going, uh, spontaneously but of course there were some efforts to send people to there and the other shocking issue which is how, how was it so far with the alternative to with the original plan which is the peace talks you know and this is the thing that is sending the most negative message to the Palestinian people where is the PA now how, how are things a specific example there is a real problem according to Israel but also to international observers with the messages that are embedded in Palestinian school books from grades 2 to 12 according to one analysis by the impacts research institute in the Hebrew University Palestinian school children are exposed to incitement and intolerance against Jews and Israel in subjects from social studies to history to Arabic there is violence or incitement to violence hatred radical inappropriate and disturbing content aimed at Jews again as a psychiatrist would you send a message to your own leaders saying this is damaging? It's damaging the minds of our young people. Uh, let me tell you something. You know, yesterday I was walking in one of the famous uh, bookstores here in, in London, and it's all the time enjoyable to go to those really, I consider them fancy bookstores. We don't have such in, in, in Gaza. And just going through some of the shelves, I saw a very interesting uh, uh, atlas. It shows a lot of <coughs> maps. And interestingly, it was maps of neighborhoods, UK neighborhoods that were bombed during the World War, you know. Do you think that those maps are a threat to anyone? You see a direct parallel? I'm asking, do they show any threat to anyone? So when, if, if, if we when say, if school we say, books aimed at children as young as seven and eight contain violence, incitement to violence, anti-Semitic wording... I am tired of this. Oh my God! So-called, uh, he is a journalist, and here it is: Israel killing, torturing, imprisoning, kidnapping. In just 2014 alone, 
Israel killed 2,000 Palestinians. 500 of them were children. Bombed hospitals and schools. These are all documented by United Nations, by doctors, by international organizations. And Israel lost only two soldiers that time. If you are living in a such hell that your children are killed, you are bombed, assassinated, you cannot even get out from that prison, checkpoints, you are harassed, settlers taking your land, and then can you act normally? This gentleman says you should love, you should tell your kids, these are Israelis, are very nice people. Of course, there is racism, but Israel is not only racist against Palestinians, Arabs, is massacring them, ethnic cleansing them. Instead of directing your criticism your condemnation towards the perpetrator, you are accusing the victim who is traumatized, has mental problems. Imagine in a prison, if there is torture in that prison, the prisoners inside the prison, if also is heinous prison administration that through informants divides them, put them against each other, those prisoners can also kill each other there too or commit suicide and you are accusing those prisons why they are not behaving be better why they are also um, saying words against bad words against administration which is torturing them which is killing them which is pushing them in crowded wars and keeping them there locking them this guy, in that interview, criticized Palestinians why they are divided. Of course they are divided. Israel took their lands, separated them from each other, and through their also informants, put animosity against each other, killed them, bribed them. That is the cause. I really, I get frustrated when I see also Palestinians are not able to rebuttal this hypocrisy. He's trying to answer him. He's becoming apologetic. Who are you apologizing for? For the children who are killed? For a father who lost his kids? To racist? To fascist? Israeli soldiers? Unfortunately, the name Israel is one of the prophets name but israel is not david is goliath pretending to be david is the enemy of jewish people i have no nothing against jewish people in fact i admire i love many people who are i admire and love they are jewish people and therefore, I think Jews with conscience have much more responsibility to fight against these racist fascists who took over Israel, who are giving Jewish people bad name. And that is the sources of anti-Semitism, what Israel does, get away with it. And I am so proud of Jewish people, progressive Jews, who recently protested IPAC. I am so proud of Bernie Sanders, who protested IPAC and called IPAC racist bigots, which they are. And they're corrupting our democratic system, which, well, we don't have much really democracy. If we had little democracy, IPAC is one of the top, in fact, number one corrupter 
of the democratic process. It is a lobbying, bribing, blackmailing gang. Anyway, I get just frustrated when I hear this scoundrel, the British journalist, criticizing the victim. Generations, for generations, they have been oppressed, killed, massacred, ethnic cleansing, and he has the audacity to criticize him. What a shame.